G'day folks, it's Will here from Flow Mountain Bike and this is the brand new 2023 Polygon Colossus. The Colossus is Polygon's brand new enduro race bike. It features 170 mil of travel front and rear, and it's purpose built around 29 inch wheels. It features a hydroformed alloy frame with plenty of noise cancelling protection. There are bolt on armour plates underneath the down tube, a thick rubberised chainstay protector, an E13 chain guide, and bolt in cable ports to minimise rattle. The biggest talking point of the new Polygon Colossus, however, is its intriguing suspension design. Standing for independent floating suspension, the IFS linkage was first debuted on the Mount Bromo, though the same concept carries over to the new Colossus. The chainstay is the primary swing arm, which is attached to the mainframe via two small links, which dictate the axle path and anti-squat. The seat stay then drives the shock via a rocker link, and it's this upper assembly that controls the leverage ratio. The idea isn't dissimilar to what you'd see on a specialised enduro, where the goal is to separate the bike's wheel path from the shock's leverage ratio. Polygon claims the IFS platform remains active under braking, while providing highly efficient power transfer without sacrificing small bump compliance. Bold claims indeed. The geometry on the Polygon Colossus isn't dissimilar to the Mount Bromo either. We've got a 63.5 degree head angle, a 77 degree effective seat tube angle, and on the large size we've been testing here, a 480 millimeter reach. Thanks to the IFS linkage, the chainstays can be made quite short on this bike, and as a result, we've got a 435 millimeter rear center on all frame sizes. The seat tube is also very short, in fact it was a little bit too short for our 189cm tall tester Jack, who ended up running the seat post slightly above the minimum insertion line, which is obviously not recommended. Now it could obviously fit a longer stroke dropper post, though it is worth noting that the frame's insertion depth is limited due to the interrupted seat tube. Now there is just the one Polygon Colossus model launching for 2023. It's the Colossus N9, which has a sticker price of five and a half thousand Australian dollars, which makes this one of the best value enduro bikes currently on the market. It features a Fox 38 fork with a grip damper, a Float X2 shock with a four-way adjustable damper, a mostly Shimano XT drivetrain, SRAM Code R brakes with 200mm rotors front and rear, and huge 2.6 inch wide Schwalbe Magic Mary tyres, complete with super gravity casings and the Attic soft rubber compound. Now it's worth noting that the wheels on this bike don't actually come tubeless ready out of the box. You're gonna to need to buy tubeless rim tape, valves and sealant in order to ditch the tubes, which is pretty disappointing for a mountain bike in this day and age, especially when Polygon is selling these bikes direct to consumer. Also disappointing is the lack of setup information for the suspension. We ended up going with 27% sag for the rear shock and we started out with Fox's recommended damper settings for the Float X2. Those work pretty well, though the suspension isn't overly progressive on this bike, so we did end up adding a volume spacer to the rear shock in order to improve its bottom out support. Now with the tyres set up tubeless, our Polygon Colossus N9 test bike came in at 17.88 kilos. That is very heavy, even for an alloy enduro bike. The frame is a big contributor, coming in at a claimed 4.5 kilos, including the Float X2 shock. And the Schwalbe tyres are also quite robust. These weigh in at 1,350 grams each, thanks to those thick super gravity casings. So how does the Polygon Colossus ride on the trail? Well, for a 170mm travel enduro bike, it has to be said that it delivers impressive pedal efficiency. Many big travel bikes tend to be pretty well behaved when you're seated and pedaling smooth circles, but they turn into a gooey pile of golden syrup as soon as you stand up and sprint. That's not the case for the Colossus though, which resists bobbing even when you're hammering out of the saddle. It is heavy, but thanks to the responsive suspension, it actually climbs pretty well. The steep seat angle puts you in a great position, and the lack of wallow from the rear shock gives it a steady and calm demeanor with no need to reach for the climb switch. Though it is very efficient, the magic of the IFS linkage is the fact that it remains nice and smooth on choppy terrain. There's loads of grip on tap, and indeed the rear end remains active whether you're on the brakes or not. Along with the raked out geometry and the stout Fox 38, 
The Colossus loves to plow through rough terrain. It does tend to stick to the ground though, which is a result of the supple suspension, the sticky tires and the near 18 kilo weight. As such, it is a bike that needs to be bossed around and ridden aggressively to get the most out of it and steer it in the direction that you want. Preferably that direction is down steep, chunky and technical descents where the Colossus feels most at home. Indeed, the way it maintains speed through the rough is impressive, making it well suited to its enduro racing intentions. As for the downsides, well you do notice the weight when riding the Colossus across flatter terrain. Sure it pedals well, but there's a lot of effort that's required to get that mass moving. It's not particularly playful or poppy, which isn't helped by those huge 2.6 inch tyres. These are a curious spec choice given that most enduro bikes will come with 2.3 to 2.5 inch tyres. Of course, the stock Magic Marys do offer a load of damping and grip, which will inspire confidence for less experienced riders. For skilled racers, however, fitting a narrower set of tyres will help to lower rolling resistance, while also improving general handling and steering precision. The lack of tool storage is a bit of a bummer on this bike, and so too is the fact that you can't easily run it as a mullet. And while the IFS linkage does offer performance advantages, it also adds complexity, weight, and manufacturing cost. It's worth acknowledging that a well-designed single pivot bike can also ride well, as we experienced with the Siskiyou T8 we've tested previously. Indeed, there's no reason why that platform couldn't be scaled up to a 170mm travel enduro bike, which would be a lot simpler and likely cheaper as well. Now, while most of the components on this bike are solid and have performed well, we did encounter some issues throughout testing. The Fox 38 suffered from a leaky wiper seal, which oozed lubrication oil. And during the second ride, the rear end developed some play, which took some time to troubleshoot, given there are so many pivots back there. It turned out to be from the spherical bushings at the end of the seat stays, which are designed to reduce side loading on the rear shock. It is a good idea, but it likely requires more maintenance in order to stay on top of the noise. There's also some creaking from the drivetrain, which may have been from the KMC chain or the exterior rear hub, the latter of which has an annoyingly inconsistent free hub mechanism, which is sometimes silent and sometimes not. Thankfully, the wheels themselves have been solid though, with the rims remaining true and dent free, which is impressive given that Jack typically puts wheels through the hurt locker. Unfortunately, the snazzy paint job has already endured a few chips and scratches. Otherwise, we dig all of the frame protection and along with the well-managed cable routing, the Colossus does deliver a quiet and well-damped ride. And that, folks, brings us to our verdict on the 2023 Polygon Colossus. And thanks to its reasonable price tag, the solid build kit and the contemporary geometry, we reckon this is gonna be a popular enduro bike. It offers bag loads of traction thanks to its chunky tires and active suspension, with a ground-hugging ride quality that allows it to monster through really rough and technical terrain. The IFS platform means it pedals remarkably well though, giving it great efficiency whether you're cruising up a transfer stage or sprinting for the finish line. It is a very heavy bike though, and the complex suspension design means maintenance is going to be more involved. It also lacks some of the features and adaptability of its contemporary competitors, and as a result, it's less versatile overall. But if the heft doesn't bother you, and you're after a dedicated enduro race bike with efficient pedaling manners, then the Polygon Colossus is surely one to add to the list. Now, as always, there is more information about the Polygon Colossus in the full review over at flowmountainbike.com. Just click the link in the video description below to check it out. Otherwise, we'd love to hear what you guys think of the Colossus, and if you've got any questions for us, make sure you drop those into the comments below. Otherwise, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and we'll see you guys next time. Tooroo!